Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Let's talk. Handmaid's Tale Season 3, Episode 10. Let's get started. The episode opens with June going back to the Waterford's home and of course she's being escorted by Aunt Lydia. And as she's walking, she has this limp. And we remember that her legs really aren't 100% because she's been in this extended prayer. Her knees are all bruised and bloody and she's limping back to the home. As she enters the Waterford's home, she realizes that all of the books and artwork and all of the things that are artsy decor are all gone. She immediately knows that wow, DC has had some effect on this home or either something is wrong. She's walking around the home getting a little nervous because from the previous episodes, June has only been thinking about herself, which is really, really odd. And she's not thinking of anybody else. And she's really getting on the viewer's nerves. And I think the writers are doing this on purpose to set us up so we can watch her fall. After she gets there, she talks to Beth, which is a Martha in the Waterford home, and she says, well, you know what? I'm really thinking about getting the children out. How many people do we know to spread the word? And she looks at her, Beth looks at her like, are you crazy? Like, do you not know you just got about three or four people killed because of the stuff that you want to do and you're acting in such a selfish way? She just gives her that shake, like, you got to be out of your mind. And I really think June is out of her mind because at times her eyes look like she's just on another planet. I don't think she cares anymore. She's really reckless. She doesn't care who's in her way to get what she wants. So later on, she makes her walk by herself to the market and when she gets to the market all of the handmaids are veering away from her they don't want to walk with her they don't want to look at her because it seems that everybody that walks with her or has some type of correlation with june dies gets injured or has a limb cut off so nobody wants anything to do with her she goes to the fridge where she talks to another handmaid, a handmaid that we see a lot. And she says, hey, I'm really thinking about getting some kids out. Once again, not thinking of others around her, not considering anybody else's feeling and feelings. And she hears again, you must be crazy. Are you insane? You can get put on the wall just for thinking that. You got to be crazy. So then she gives her a little reminder that... We can't let this continue. It's something that we have to do. As the women are in the market, they hear a siren letting them know to stand at attention. Everybody come out of the market. We need to stand you in a specific place. They are getting ready and information for somebody that's coming of importance. Aunt Lydia is telling them, straighten up, ladies. Put your head down. Look nice. We want to look great for leadership. Nobody knows who's coming. One thing that I think was interesting is that everybody else has their head down. And June, for some reason, and she feels like she's privileged not to do so and it's really getting <laughs> annoying so then we see Fred he appears and he has a different look he, he really has a different uh, energy um, that that says that I've learned or I've been inspired by something that I've seen in DC and I'm very attentive and I'm looking around and he looks very assertive and it's kind of eerie this new look and this new confidence that he has to get ready or to make things better or to make Gilead this better place. He looks really eerie. So the next shot we see is of course Commander Wilson and we think uh oh is he gonna bound everybody his lips together is this gonna be something crazy nobody knows so as he gets closer to the handmaids he notices June and he pretty much can tell that she doesn't have her head down either but he walks up to her and he asked her you know how is Joseph you know how does he treat you treat you and she says he treats me very respectful he respects me and he gives this look like, 
He's respecting you. Yeah, that's odd. And Fred has this look on his face after June gives that answer. Like, no, that was the wrong answer to give. Don't say respect. Don't say respect. That's not what we, the answer we were looking for, right? So that's odd as well. June gets back to Joseph's house. Joseph's house. So June gets back to Joseph's house, of course, and she's busy once again thinking that she can't be punished and she's going around the home looking for files. She's looking for anything that can give her any type of clues about where children are, the status of where they are, if they're okay, their health, maybe their current names, anything that she can find. And as she's doing this, <laughs> Mrs. Waterford walks in. Oh, where is it? She's looking around. She's just deranged. We learn that she's off of her meds. That she's really behaving in such a way that we can begin to be really concerned for her mental health. And she doesn't know what's going on half of the time. She walks into the office and she sees that June is looking for something. And she says, well, what are you doing? At this point, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, they about to chop June's arms off from looking, trying to look and find these files. I'm thinking, oh, what are they gonna do? But for some strange reason, June is getting away with a lot. This is foreshadowing. The writers are setting us up so we can watch June fall, and I think it's gonna be a hard fall. But June, for some reason, she tells her, oh, I'm looking for files. Oh, she's just telling her all of this stuff, and I'm thinking, why are you so comfortable? She's still the enemy. Don't get comfortable. She's still the enemy, and she still can say, hey, I want to get rid of you. But she tells her she's looking for, for files, and of course, the wife says, oh, well, they're not up here. They're in the basement. So her and June go to the basement, and June con continues to, to go through files and paper and boxes, and she finds her own file and finds out that Hannah, Hannah Banana, and her other baby, they are okay, and she does see the file and where they are and the statuses and their names. So after that, June, she tells the wife, you know, your husband can get a truck out of here. Why don't you guys just get out of here and start a new life and we don't have to be here. This could all end tomorrow. So we learn that the wife says that Joseph can't leave. He can't go across the border because he's a criminal. This is new information because we've always wondered if he has this power and he's just such insult him and his wife about this world that they created, why haven't they left yet? He can't leave because he can't cross the border. So this is some very important information. And wow, oh wow, why can't he cross this border and he's supposed to be such a strong influence on Gilead? Very interesting. We then cut to the next scene where Fred and his wife and Commander Wilson, they are in this nice high rise apartment because of course their previous home was burned down and they are in this high-rise apartments and they're discussing certain things and the wife chimes in and gives her two cents about the next steps and what are some things that they can improve in and improve in for Gilead and Commander Wilson gives her this look and Fred this look like why are you telling your two cents why are you even able to speak and he gives Fred that look like is this the way you're doing things here? So at this point, you can see Fred is really just showing all of his feathers per se to Commander Wilson and letting him know, hey, I have authority. And all of a sudden, he pretty much makes it known that I think Joseph is a threat to this society because he can't even take care of his own home. Maybe this is something that we can consider. Maybe we need to make an example out of him. And of course his wife is saying, oh, that's a bit extreme. Don't you think that's too much? I'm so over her character, I'm so over her showing any compassion in certain areas because of course she always thinks of herself and tries to make it seem like she, she cares at some points, but I, you know, I'm really not buying it. So Commander Wilson takes his consideration and says, hey, maybe we should pay him a visit just to give an evaluation and to see what's going on in this home since he's such a very strong influence with 
our whole community and what we're trying to do here. So let's check him out. And then you're thinking, oh, they're, they're finally gonna see Joseph's, Joseph's house and now there's no room now to hide behind this house that he has covered with getting people in and out of Gilead. So it's really nerve wracking to see what are they gonna do now. So June, she's in the house and all of a sudden, Beth comes to her and says, hey, uh, Commander Wilson and Fred and Aunt Lydia, they want you in the room. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe this is finally the scene or the moment where June receives some type of punishment. Is this the scene? Is this the episode? So she goes to the room and what's interesting, we see the references between seasons one and three about what the handmaids used to do beforehand when they were in certain houses. So they would get into this room to prepare for the ceremony. And if you can remember in flashback, that the ceremonies were, of course, the time where the men would come in to do what they did to get the women pregnant. So now they know that they're gonna make sure that Joseph goes in and completes the ceremony with June. They, won't, they want proof that this is happening and they're gonna stay there until they know it is completed. And I'm thinking, uh-oh the wife is gonna lose it. <laughs> so they go into the room, Joseph, the wife, and um, June, and they go in there and they pre they're they starting to prepare for a ceremony and the wife is losing it, she's crying. And June, she makes a wonderful point in saying, why are you so distraught? I mean, this is what you wanted. This is, this is, this is the world you created. And it's one thing to implement their thoughts, but when they actually see the terror and, and the rape and the harsh feelings and they go to go along with that, all of a sudden they're sad about it. And Jews just kind of looking at them like, why are you, we live this every day. The handmaids live, live this every day. And for some reason you seem like the world is over. So the wife goes to the other room. So june and joseph can complete the ceremony as they do that they have a doctor that comes in to observe june to make sure she's healthy enough for the ceremony what i found interesting is that the doctor puts on gloves no lubricant anything he just goes right in just to observe june and then that's just a clear indication that they don't humanize the handmaids. They are clearly just vessels for reproduction. And they wanted to show that in dehumanizing the handmaid. So Joseph goes into the room <laughs> and what's really eerie is that June is verbally walking him through this. It's okay, close your eyes, think of it as a business transaction. Let's just get this over with, let's just get this done walking him through the, the rape process. And I just thought that that just blew me away that he was so distraught about it, but yet he created and implemented and agreed with those ideas. <laughs> wow. So after they complete the ceremony, they go downstairs and Aunt Lydia confirms that the ceremony is complete and everything is okay. <laughs> I'm very, very, very concerned for Beth, the wife, and June. They're focusing our attention to Joseph as if something bad is going to happen to him and the wife. I don't think that's the direction they're going. I don't think they'll do that. I think if anything, they'll take them far away somewhere, but not put them on the wall or kill them. So in the next scene, Joseph gives June like a morning after pill. And June tells him, you know this, they can put you on the wall for this. And he's just so distraught. He looks like, I don't know what he looks like. He's out of his element, all of that confidence and all of that degrading and, and just his energy and just the way that he is, is completely different. But yet June is still trying to console him and tell him, well, you'll know they'll be back and you'll know that we have to do this again. 
why are you consoling the enemy? I just don't understand it. So later on, she goes back to the market. She sees somebody else. She tells the handmaid that she usually talks to, and she tells her, hey, do, do we know anybody? Did you meet anybody? And she's just really, really confused. Like, why do you keep asking me this? And she lets her know that basically I know that your son is alive and he has blonde hair. And in that moment, she says, wow. And this, of course, these are children that they've had before they arrived to Gilead. And she has a moment to where she reflects like, wow, you know, his dad had blonde hair. And that kind of gives her the energy to say, you know what, maybe we do need to get these kids out of here. Maybe we need to help. As they're talking, Janine, she hears them talking and I'm thinking, oh no. She just heard what they said because, you know, some, her brain is in and out. Sometimes she can help. Sometimes she can be in that moment. And sometimes you just, you don't know if she's off of her rocker. And she says, well, I can help. <laughs> just got a really, really bad feeling. Something is stirring up. Something is, is mixing. And even though it seems like there's a glare of hope and they're trying to get these children out of here, I do don't think it is peaches and cream. I think that the wrong people are listening. Somebody has heard and they got some stuff up their sleeve with Commander Wilson there and he's seeing how gentle and respectful and lenient compared to DC. I think that we are in for some harsh heart because we still have a while to go before this season ends. We're in, we're on episode 10. I think there's a total of 13. I think they're really going to knock our socks off with the way that this ends. I don't think it'll be pretty. So close to the end of the episode, we see Fred and his wife. They're in this office and she tells him, you know, you've been so focused on something that will make you better for your gains when you're not thinking about getting our daughter back and building our family. So I have this connect here. I have this number, somebody from Canada that will help us. All they want from you is your cooperation. Big mistake. Big, big, big mistake. He already had a pinky cut off. Okay, and I don't think Fred is trying to, like I said earlier, show his feathers to Commander Wilson. I really feel that he'll throw his wife under the bus just to show how serious he is and how loyal he is to the development of Gilead. I think that he might give up his wife and snitch on her for having this connect with Canada just because it's, it's to get the daughter back. But I really think that he will throw her under the bus because she has a connect with the enemy, basically. And she's using that to work with Canada. The key word here is she's saying to cooperate. And cooperate, when she said that word, I'm sure it's something that would either get her murdered, disfigured, or he's going to throw her under the bus and maybe even dead. So I really think they, like I said, they're setting us up and a couple of people are going to fall. I think the end of this season, June will definitely get the punishment that she has not received. They haven't been touching her because they've been using her as the face for videos and, and, and national publication on television. So they really have been making sure that she's okay. And I'm really, I, was, I started off being really confused about why they're letting June get away with a lot of stuff. They're allowing her character to be really annoying to where she's just acting so selfishly. She's getting people killed and hurt or even murdered and all for what she wants. She's not thinking about anybody else's well-being or anybody else's families and they're really allowing us to get tired of June and really kind of a little bit hateful and wishing that she would just cooperate just to let things cool down it's just one thing after another after another after another they're setting her up to watch her fall so i hope you enjoyed this review subscribe make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads follow me on instagram same profile name official bun underscore e love you bye